Welcome to my Wednesday Live and I am super, super excited to share with you guys today some of the stuff I've been learning. I've really been learning a lot from the Parenting Twins conference that I was part of because I've been able to access all of the sessions. So some of the stuff that I've been learning, I'm going to be sharing with you guys as we go. Okay, so today's topic is all about your child and the word no. I've done a little bit on this topic before. I've done a little bit talking about the word no. I mean, clearly we have to say no to our children. Now, just before we keep on going, I release videos like this every single week. So don't forget, hit the bell, subscribe, and you'll receive a notification when another video comes up that's gonna help you be the best parent that you can be to your small children. When do we say it? What do we expect about it? You know, do we expect them to stop straight away? Will they listen? All these questions are really, really common. Okay, and if you are struggling with your child and the word no, you are not alone. Okay, so what do we do about the word no in our children? First thing is that the word no is really needed, right? Sometimes we need to say no. Kids need to hear the word no sometimes, okay? And it's okay because as an adult, it's really important that we know what no means, obviously. It's really important that we can manage ourselves when we hear the word no or when we have a disappointment that has to happen because we can't all get that job, we can't all win the race, we can't all, you know, be that person that we want to be. We can be the person, but we can't always win the things that we want to win or get the opportunities that we work so hard for. This can be really, really poignant, especially for kids that are just finishing high school and they've worked really hard to get a certain enter score or a certain score or to get into a certain college degree or university degree. And sometimes they just do not get the right score to be able to do that straight away. And that can be really, really challenging if your child has never heard the word no or never really had to manage things that um, aren't ideal for them or aren't exactly what they wanted, then those are the moments when the rubber really, really starts to hit the road. So what we wanna do is teach our kids what no means, but how do we do it and what can we expect? Okay, so I'm not really dealing with people, you know, at age 17 and 18. That's not really where I'm at. I'm not really dealing with parents with kids those ages. What I do deal with is parents of kids ages zero to six, as you guys will know if you look at the little thing above. So kids age zero to six, what age can they understand the word no? Okay, I've got a two-year-old. He can definitely understand the word no. Okay, can definitely understand it. So I can say, no, we don't do that in our house or no, we do not throw toys at our sister's head. No, we do not, blah, 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 blah. Yep, can I expect him to follow through with that? No, I can't. Can I expect my two-year-old or three-year-old or four-year-old or five-year-old can I expect them every time? They will start to learn to, but can I expect them every time to follow through with that? No, no, I can't, I can't. And do you know why? Because they're not developmentally um, developed. They're not developed enough yet. They're not mentally developed enough and their brain development has not moved that far forward that they can manage their impulses. Okay, so if you put a biscuit, for instance, in front of a two-year-old and you say, don't eat that, that is for one, incredibly unfair. Okay, that's really unfair. And also, the child just doesn't have self-control. So yes, they're gonna eat it probably, but unless they're terrified, then yes, they're going to eat it. And, you know, <laughs> you can't really get angry at them because, well, you can, but you're best to not because it's actually their developmental. They're actually not developed enough to be able to hold onto that impulse. They can't control their impulses, right? That's why young kids, you know, hit each other with things and that's why young kids have tantrums and that's why they just don't know how to deal with things very, very well because their brain is not developed enough. If you can look at it from a developmental perspective, it can make things much easier and much less stressful as a parent because you're like, oh, they're just not quite ready to understand that. Does that mean, oh, for starters I need to say as well, um, the, the ability to start having more self-control starts at about age six. So like I've got a seven year old and you can definitely see the difference. So she can start to really go, you know what? I can really not do that now or I can really not do the things that I was going to do. And to be honest, I really wish I knew these age levels just a little bit earlier, okay? So I've had a rough idea of them, but I didn't know the specific ones until recently. 
Okay, so it's real. Hi, Simone. How are you going? It's really, really good to know this stuff because if your child is acting out, if they keep doing the things that you ask them not to do, it is not up to the child to be the developmental person who knows all about these things. It is up to us as the parent to manage it. And I said, it's up to us as the parent, all right? It is not up to my four-year-old to be able to not X, Y, Z. It is not up to her to go, I'm not going to, you know, touch those paints that are all over the table. In fact, I'm not going to put them all over the walls. She knows that she shouldn't do that, but she get, if she has that impulse, she may or may not be able to not do it. She might be able to stop herself. She might go, mm, I don't think mum will like this because she's four. You know, they're starting to understand, but... If your child does something like that, yes, you can get angry. Yes, you can get cross. Yes, you can be say, we don't do that in our house. Please do not put stuff on the wall. Yeah, of course you can say all that stuff. They need to learn. But don't be so angry at the child because it's not the child's fault. It isn't the kid's fault that they are not developed, right? It is not a four-year-old's fault that they aren't, you know, going through puberty yet. Huh? It is not... Do you see what I'm saying? It's not a child's fault that they're not able to understand things like a teenager or like a 20 year old. Okay, so us expecting our little tiny people, especially I have to remind myself regularly about my two year old. It's not his fault that he is not able to reason like my seven year old. He's finding it very hard to actually hold himself back because he's a little kid and he can't control his impulses. Right, so for me, that has been super helpful in my parenting journey. And I've, again, I've been applying this for a while because I knew it from my teaching degree too. But it's really, really helpful to know because at the end of the day, you can get frustrated by it as a parent. You can get really annoyed by it. You can get angry by it. But at the end of the day, it is actually not your child's fault. It is a developmental thing. Okay, so when your kid, when you say no to your child, your two-year-old can understand you and can, can understand that no, that's something we shouldn't do. But the actual impulse to actually stop doing it might not get through. Okay, and we have to, we don't have to be okay with that, but we have to understand that. Okay, so talking about impulses, how hard is it to resist having chocolate after dinner? That's what I've been trying to do in my 30 day reboot. And it's just brought home to me, even just thinking about it then, it's really hard to control those impulses that you really, really want to do. I'm a 33, nearly 34 year old adult. It's really, really hard to control my impulses sometimes for things that I really want to do or I feel you know, impulsively um, drawn to do. You can imagine a two year old, a three year old, a four year old, a five year old, and even a six year old, although they're starting to come along a bit, you can imagine how hard it must be for them to resist these things. So there you go, a little spiel on the word no today. Okay, your kids can understand it at age two. Age six is when they start to develop and start to develop self-control. Okay, so I need to remind myself of that sometimes and I challenge you to remind yourself of it too. The other little thing I need to put in there is, do we just let them get away with everything? No, of course we don't. We don't just go, yeah, sure, you can do whatever you like because you're developing. No, we still need to teach our kids. We still need to show them things. We still need to be emotionally available to teach them about things. We still need to sometimes go natural consequence. You'll have a bowl with your ice cream because it might drip on the ground. And if the child throws a tantrum about having to have a bowl, well, and your ice cream drops on the ground, well, that's a real shame and it's up to us to help. But at the end of the day, the child's still gonna start learning stuff from that when they're that little bit older, five, six, seven, those sorts of ages. All right, so with your young kids, it's more about changing what's around them. It's about helping them follow the rules and follow the limits that you're setting in place, okay? And helping them follow your expectations with love, with care, with connection, with all of those things. Okay, so I hope you like my little spiel on the word no today. Don't forget that you need to hug your kids every single day and love them to bits, okay? I'm sure you won't forget that. Anyway, I'm Miranda Hodge and this is Smart Mama Smart Kids Parenting. Do you feel overwhelmed, unconfident, and like you just don't know what to do as an early years mum? Don't worry, this is the same for lots and lots of people and I have a special invitation for you today. If you look below in the description, you will be able to see a link to my 20 minute Can I Help You call. This is a free call 
free for mums who want to just find out whether or not coaching is a good idea for them and whether or not I will be able to help you with your stuff. Okay, so if you feel overwhelmed, don't keep feeling overwhelmed. Don't keep feeling unconfident. Start doing something about it today and give yourself and your children the best gift that you possibly could and find out, jump on there, book a call with me and find out whether or not coaching is something that could really, really help you and boost you into the parent that you want to be. Okay, bye.